whoever it was who was breaking into my home had been doing it for so long that I was no longer willing to live in fear. Happy Halloween, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Crime Circus Cult. My name's The Drip Keeper, and I'll be your host this evening for this special Halloween episode. Anyways, tonight's feature presentation is a true horror story, and it takes place on Elm Street. Yes, that's right, this is the real life Elm Street where two teenagers entered a home of horrors, where all of their nightmares became true. Anyways, the senior citizen man was terrorized for months in a home that he had lived in his entire life. He decided to take things into his own hands. And in return, two teenagers ended up dead. This is his interrogation shortly after the crimes. And I'll meet you at the end of this video and we'll discuss this case together. Now let's see what Byron Smith has to say for himself. <laughs> this is Sergeant Investigator Jeremy Lubitz with the Morris County Sheriff's Office. And the date is 11-23-2012. The time right now is 14.59 hours. I'm currently in the interview room at the Morrison County Sheriff's Office. And currently present with me is Byron, Byron David Smith. Smith. Okay, hold on one second, Byron. Okay. Um, uh, Byron, can you tell me your full name, please? Byron David Smith. Mm -hmm. And uh, I live at 143. Oh, hold on, Byron. Okay. What is your date of birth? 11 June 48. So, say it again, I'm sorry. You said 11 June 48. Yeah. So, June 11th, 1948? Or? I use the military terminology, yeah. June 11th, 48. Okay. All right. So, June 11th, 1948. That's your date of birth, correct? Okay. And, uh, yeah, Byron, what is your home address? 14319 Elm Street, formerly 709 Riverwood. Okay. But you live at 14319 Elm Street, yeah. um, off of, in the Riverwood area, correct? In Little yeah. Falls. Elm Street. Elm Street, Little yes. Falls, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. And the zip code there? 56345. Okay. And Byron, um, before I ask you any questions, uh, you had currently been placed under arrest, Byron, today while out at your residence. Is that fair to say? Yes. Okay. Um, and... Before I ask you any questions in regards to um, the reason or why you, the reason that led up to why you were placed under arrest was explained to you at the scene, is that correct? Because there were bodies and that's a good reason. Okay, yes, and that was explained to you, that's why you were yes. placed under arrest at that time, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, now Byron, before I ask you any questions in, uh, in regards to what had happened, I'm going to read you what's called the warning and consent form. These are your Miranda warning legal rights. Have you ever heard of your Miranda warning rights? Yeah, anybody who watches TV hears them. Okay, so you've heard, heard of them yes. before, right? Okay. Um, Byron, before we ask you any questions, you must understand what your rights are. You have the right to remain silent. Do you understand that? Yes. Okay. Anything you say can be used against you in court. Do you understand that? I understand that. Okay. You have the right to talk to a lawyer for advice before we question you and to have them with you during questioning. Do you understand that? I understand that, and mm -hmm. I waive that considering the circumstances. Okay. Um, if you cannot afford a lawyer and want one, a lawyer will be provided for you. Understand that, Aaron? I understand that. Okay. If you decide to answer questions now without a lawyer present, you will still have the right to stop answering at any time. You also have the right to stop answering at any time until you talk to a lawyer. Do you understand that, Mary? I understand that. Okay. I may choose to skip one question or whatever. But That's your choice. Okay. Yes, by all means, Byron. And then, Byron, with your rights in mind, are you willing to talk to me at this time? Yes. Okay. Um, do you have any questions about your rights that I explained to you? It's very clear. Okay. And uh, you're willing to talk with me and can um, about any questions I have in regards to this? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, now, Byron, I got called out to your residence today um, basically on some information that something might have happened at your house um, either today or yesterday. More specifically. I called my good friend, Bill Anderson, who is a neighbor, okay. and asked him to contact a lawyer. He wasn't able to. Apparently, they're all busy today. The offices are closed. Okay. Since he was not able to contact a lawyer, I asked him to contact the Morrison County Sheriff's Department next. Okay. 
You asked him to uh, I asked, Bill Anderson. I, I asked him to call you. Okay. And then uh, now, Bill, how long have you known Bill Anderson? Uh, basically, since he moved in, it must be uh, 20, 25 years. Okay. Well, maybe it's more than that. Anyway, long For time. A long time, okay. How long have you lived at your residence, sir? I have been physically resident since uh, March 2009. Mm -hmm. However, it has been my home of record since the house was built in September of 66. Okay. So you've been, you've had that place for quite a long time then, yep. correct? Okay. Yeah, it has always been my home. Mm -hmm. And before that, we lived on the west side. Okay. Do you live at the residence with anybody or do you live by yourself? I am by myself. My mother passed away uh, three years ago. Okay. Now, you said that you had talked, and you called and talked with Bill Anderson. When did you call and talk with Bill Anderson? I first called him about uh, 1130 this morning. Okay. Um, and then when you called Bill, um, what did you, did you ask him for something? Is that correct? I... Bill is the only person I have shared the breaking and entering series with. Okay. As so, a neighbor, I feel it's important, and I trust him absolutely. Sure. So when you called Bill, you said this morning at about 1130, it was, right? I that said right? Uh, that uh, I had a problem, and I would appreciate it if he got a lawyer and asked him to come over to my house. Okay. Okay. I don't know the local lawyers very well. I Sure. Have you know almost not, but Bill, Bill seems to know everybody. Okay, all right. And and uh, were you, was he able to get a hold of a lawyer for you? Or anything? No, he wasn't. No, okay. he uh, he totally failed. He even tried Brainerd. Oh. And uh, okay, he did find a couple, but they are only involved in you know minor stuff like deeds and wills. Sure. And like just to confirm with you, uh, uh, it's your choice at this time that uh, uh, you wish to waive or have enough an attorney present with you while you talk to me, correct? Yes, and if I find anything that I object to, I'll let you know okay. immediately and clearly. Okay, very good, very good. Um, now, how many times did you talk with Bill Anderson about this? Oh, there was back and, oh, just today? Yeah. Today, there were, we had back and forth phone calls. There must have been 10 or 12 when okay. he was calling me with the latest. I was calling him with, uh, well, okay, that didn't work. What next? Okay. You initially told Bill that somebody broke into your house. Is that correct? Oh, Bill knew that somebody broke into my house. Yes. Okay. Uh, he just, he, he knew that there was a sequence going. He didn't know that it had happened again. Okay. And I tried to be very nonspecific, I, but he, he could guess. Um, did you specifically tell Bill that um, you had maybe shot somebody that broke into your house or anything? Or? No, but okay. uh, Bill knows that I was having a major problem and that uh, that I might do something. Okay. So you've actually been having problems with people breaking into your house, is that correct? The same people, the same pattern. It goes back a long time. Okay. When did that start? When did... It started uh, where people First time were it happened lives. was, I'm guessing, 12 to 15 years ago. And there was a sheriff's report on it when they uh, broke into the garage and uh, tore up a bunch of packing cases, threw glassware on the floor to break it, and stole a bunch of clothing. Okay. Now, I try to not be sexist, but when somebody steals clothing and ignores the tools, I tend to think it's a woman. Okay. What kind of clothing did they take? You remember that time? Was it uh, women's clothes or men's clothes? Something different? Military clothes. You know, the kind of unisex stuff that... Sure. And not only that, but the following week, uh, Ashley Williams was seen wearing my flight line military jacket from the Air Force to school. Okay. Ashley Williams? Yeah. And how do you know this Ashley Williams? I've never met her. Okay. Except maybe now, and then it's not sure, but I've never met her. Okay. Um, but you heard that somebody saw her, or uh, you saw her? Bill has, Bill has close relationship with the schools because he does fundraising. And uh, he asked, and this was reported to him. Okay. However, since it was gossip and rumor, it wasn't official evidence. Hmm. 
Okay. So you heard, uh, Bill told you that uh, he saw Ashley Williams potentially wearing uh, He didn't see her. Clothing. He heard that okay. she had been wearing okay. it. Okay. And he, so he, uh, you should check this with him because I want to be totally accurate on, but I assume he saw her wearing it to the bus. Okay. And this yeah. was uh, what, like a camouflage jacket? No. Cold uh, shirt. I was in, in uh, 68 through 72, and at that time, everything was all of drab. Mm -hmm. And at that time, they stitched the reflective stripes on the coats for use on flight lines. Okay. Shortly after that, they shifted to uh, requiring vests, you know, the full reflective and colors and everything. Mm -hmm. So uh, this coat, 20 years later, was very rare. You know, it's not the sort of thing you would find laying around, and mine was gone, and it was, she's, and she was seen wearing it. So there was some reasonable suspicion there. Sure. And apparently she was uh, not in full possession of her facilities because she dropped stuff all the way home that Bill collected the next morning. From your house? Yeah. Well, uh, stuff that she had collected in her arms, and it was falling out of her arms on the way home. So kind right. of a trail from uh, uh, where she had broken into? That trail of dropped stolen stuff she was taking home. Did that trail of, of, of broken or uh, dropped stuff, uh, was that in your yard at all? Yeah, it was down the driveway. Okay. Leading towards their house. So is Ashley Williams a neighbor of yours, your guesses? My, my closest neighbor. Okay. So she lives, what, right next door? At the end of my rather large yard. Okay. This is a very brief interruption to your regularly scheduled program. I'd like to tell you about 1090creations.com, and yes, there's dashes in between the words. There's a link on the screen right now, and there's a link down below as well. These are custom handcrafted laser etched wood pieces created by a circus family member for circus family members. And for a limited time only, you can use promo code CIRCUSFAM for 15% off. Okay. So, yes, they are my closest neighbor. Okay. Do you know Ashley's parents at all? I have tried very hard to avoid them. Okay. They're nasty people. Okay. You've never gotten along with them? I or? have avoided not getting along with them. Mm. Okay. They have misused and abused too many other people I know for me to have anything to do with them. I limit myself to being polite. Okay. You know, if I see them by the mailbox, I'll say good morning. Mm -hmm. I've never intentionally talked with them about anything. Except last year, uh, the spruce in the neighborhood have a fungus disease. And I went to the door and gave them Xerox copy of how to identify it and how to treat it. Just because getting rid of an infection in the neighborhood is a good thing. Mm -hmm. There was no social interaction. They took the paper and shut the door. Okay. Okay. But, uh, and is Ashley, uh, do you know where she's still currently living at home with her parents? She's in and out a lot. Okay. So you've seen her there recently? Uh, I haven't seen her. I know what her car looks like. Okay. Because Bill pointed it out to me. Okay. Bill, Bill watches everything. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, they pointed out, he pointed out her car, and I, you know, I, I see it there occasionally. Okay. Occasionally, meaning like several times a month, maybe a couple times a week. What kind of car does she drive? Uh, it's a white bulby thing with an ugly, coming apart, green vinyl roof. Okay. Did she over there with a boyfriend that you saw, or another boy? Or? They're too far away from my house to see. Well, sure, I was just wondering if you yeah, ever saw I, that. Okay. And uh, so you've heard and suspect that Ashley uh, Williams had been breaking into your place from on different occasions. Is that correct to say? Yes. Okay. And uh, now, in particular, you had an incident um, that happened just recently at your house of break mm -hmm. correct? Yeah. When did this happen? Uh, that would be about three weeks ago. Okay. And uh, the break-in occurred by kicking in the panel on the basement door. Okay. The... Uh, panel around the paneling around the door was I mean around was shattered and then they reached through that panel to open up the deadbolt and the knob lock okay were you home at the time this happened no okay do you know if this happened during the day or at night I have very specifically I left to go shopping at St. Cloud 1130 in the morning 
And when I came back at six o'clock, the place had been thoroughly gone through mm. with the missing items uh, as shown in the report. Okay. So I know for sure it happened exactly when I was gone. And it's right down to within, you know, five or six hours, mm -hmm. which makes me suspect that it was someone who saw me come and go. Okay. okay. Beyond that, the following day on Sunday, I was at the adjacent property, the North, which I bought as an investment. Mm -hmm. I had not been there since Thursday, sometime between Thursday and Sunday afternoon. The break-in at my house was exactly Saturday afternoon. Sometime between Thursday and Sunday afternoon, the garage sidewalk door was kicked open, brutally, frame shattered, lock ruined. Inside the garage, boxes were opened and tipped and dumped. I wasn't keeping anything of value there, mm -hmm. so there was nothing to steal, but the place was made a mess of. Then, there is a basement door on the southwest corner of that house. The basement door was kicked in. Again, frame shattered, lock ruined. And throughout the house, storage closets were left with the doors open and drawers were left half open. Okay. Did you call and report that incident? Uh, I turned in a written report to Jamie asking him to investigate. Okay. I have not had confirmation that he investigated, but I assume he did. Okay. I would like to get a copy of that as also. Okay. So anyway, yeah, I, have, I reported the uh, time limits that I observed and, uh, mm -hmm. and and the damage that I observed and asked him to verify and document it. Okay. There was also a tool bag stolen. Ashley ignores tools, but it looks like she wanted the bag because there were tools left alongside the bag that weren't taken. But it was a nice bag. So you suspect uh, a female party stole it? It's the same pattern all the way through. Okay. Okay. No. And that's years later after the previous one. Sure. sure. So uh, the house was thoroughly gone through. But there was nothing there. Okay. It, 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 it's an empty house that I'm restoring after being vandalized this past spring. Okay. But that's a different story. You know, unrelated. No, you told me uh, at your residence um, today that your house had just been broken into. Can you tell me about that? Okay. Uh, I had not gone to anyone for Thanksgiving. I am somewhat uncomfortable with other people's family holidays. Mm -hmm. Some people enjoy it and it help, helps them feel home like I feel like uh, uh, a little out of place. Mm -hmm. It's not the kind of social thing I do. Okay. So I was uh, staying at home, and uh, just because there wasn't anything big happening, I was in the basement in my favorite reading chair, reading a paperback. Mm -hmm. Was and this on Thanksgiving Day? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Okay. This was. Uh, this would have been about twelve o'clock, the exact time on the videotape. I mean, okay. on the DVR. So, I'm sorry, 12 o'clock noon yes. on Thanksgiving Day, yes. which was uh, yesterday. yesterday, correct? Yesterday. Mm -hmm. Okay, on Thursday. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, the house is a very quiet house. It, it's got electric heat, and it's, uh, it, it's a very quiet house. And I hear someone rattling the upstairs door by the garage where everybody comes and goes. Mm -hmm. This is wrong. You shouldn't be rattling doorknobs without at least ringing the doorbell first. So I set down the book and I'm paying attention. And uh, the chair is between the bookshelves. And I see a shadow go past the picture window. And then somebody's rattling the basement door trying to get in. But it also is locked and dead bolted. And then I see the shadow in front of the picture window for maybe half a minute or a minute, like they're trying to see what they can see inside. Okay, this is getting unhappy. And then the shadow leaves, and I hear somebody walking across the deck. It's got the wooden 
plank so you can hear people walk on it. And then somebody was rattling the upstairs door. And I'm getting seriously stressed because somebody wants in and they're trying to sneak in and it's happened before. So uh, I'm sitting there hoping they go away. It's about a minute of silence and I hear a glass window broken, which I later found to be the northwest corner bedroom window. Okay. Where were you at the time in the house when you heard that? I was sitting in the same chair. In the basement? In the basement. Okay. The, uh, I consider it my reading chair. That chair, is that the one that's um, uh, like uh, right off from the steps, the bottom steps? Yeah, sir. Okay. What color is that chair? Uh, it's a reddish brown. Okay. Yeah, okay. Uh, and, uh, and one wing arm is broken, but I don't use the wing arms. So. Okay. Anyway, so I'm sitting in the chair. Now, for the past month, my life has been very unhappy. I haven't slept very well. In fact, I'm lucky to get one good night of sleep a month. And I'm keeping everything locked up all the time because I'm being victimized again and again and again. And uh, in the past couple of weeks, I've gotten into the habit of carrying my guns with me inside my house because I don't know who's going to break in when. Well, it just happened. So I'm sitting there and I hear the steps come down the hallway, turn around and come down the stairs. These are people who have stolen my guns. I figure they're willing to use guns if they steal guns. And I decide that I've got a choice of either shooting or being shot. Uh, which is sort of what I came to when I started carrying with me. Mm. Now, I've, I've been, this past month I felt very threatened. Okay. Inside my own home. And the guy came down the stairs and I shot him. Okay. When the, when the, uh, you said you heard the window break upstairs, correct? Mm -hmm. You were downstairs. You heard footsteps down the hallway, right? Yep. So that would be from the bedroom and then whoever, so uh, do you door, think yeah. somebody entered in your house through that broken window? Oh, absolutely. Okay, that's so that's how they made it. Because it was the easier place. than the deadbolted doors. Okay. And I replaced the panel that had been easy to kick out. Okay. So he just decided to break a window instead. How many yeah. footsteps did you hear? Did it sound like one person, two people? It was definitely and... one person. Okay. Definitely one person. Okay. And uh, after I shot him, I sat down in this chair and uh, uh, I was just tingling. Adrenaline. I hate adrenaline. Mm -hmm. And my blood was pounding in my ears and I just uh, wanted to calm down more than anything else. And maybe, it's hard to judge the time, two minutes, maybe five minutes. I was just sitting there with the blood pounding in my ears. And I hear more footsteps coming down the hallway. And somebody else starts down the stairs. Mm -hmm. And thinking back on it, what happened was, everybody has red buttons. Everybody has sore spots. And I had known since grade school that being ganged up on is a sore spot with me. I just couldn't think. I didn't think. I wasn't thinking. I was just, they're ganging up on me. So I killed her too. Okay. Same way, except the first shot, she tumbled. And I walked over to finish her off. It was a new Mini 14 that I bought to replace the one that had been stolen. And it jammed. Uh, my main use for it is muskrats. They destroy the bank. And once in a while a beaver, they destroy the trees. Mm -hmm. That's that's the reason I have it. It's a tool. Uh, 
and it had jammed out on the shoreline, which is why I had the 22 with me. And uh, it jammed, trigger clicked, and she laughed at me. I just pulled out the 22 and shot her and shot her. Then I sat down again, and I don't think I did anything else for an hour. When, uh, um, what time did this happen at yesterday with these two that you ended up shooting them? Uh, it would have been about 12 o'clock. So 12 o'clock noon yesterday? Yeah. Okay. And maybe one o'clock or two o'clock. Okay. I spread the carpets over the blood. Okay. When uh, um, you said first the male party came in the house yeah. after breaking the window in the northeast yeah. corner bedroom, correct? Mm -hmm. And then you heard the footsteps coming down the hallway. Yeah. Right. Uh, then immediately did he. Did he uh, turn and come down the stairwell, or did he, he go in any other rooms? He came directly down the stairs. Okay. Then and you heard footsteps coming down the stairs, is that correct? Yes, and then I saw his feet, and then I saw his legs, and when I saw his hips, I shot. Okay. All right. Did he, uh, when, when you shot, what gun were you using at that time? Uh, the Mini-14. Okay. And you had that with you in the basement when you were sitting in your chair reading? Is that correct? It was over by the stereo. Okay. When I heard the footsteps, I just stepped up and it was maybe five or eight steps away. Okay. Do you leave that gun in the basement loaded, sitting with you? No. Okay. Did you have Except for the past couple weeks. Okay. The normal location for it is in the closet upstairs in the northeast corner. Okay. That's... Uh, so my parents kept it. I kept it there, too. It's the easiest place to get if you see muskrat in the river. Okay. Okay. Uh, home defense has never been an issue mm -hmm. until recently. So was your uh, Mini-14 rifle, it was what it was, correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Was that sitting in the basement loaded at the time this mail party came, broke into your house? I always keep it loaded. Okay. Okay. How many rounds do you keep in the gun? Uh... Since it jammed uh, three or four, that's all it'll hold the maximum. They they sell them now with small cartridges. Okay, so you figure it had about three or four rounds in the gun. Yeah. Okay, and then you said you also had a uh, did you a twenty two? Is that a, a revolver pistol? What kind of gun was that? It's a revolver. Okay, is that a how many shots is that? It's a nine shot. Oh, oh it's kind of strange. Yeah. But, uh, what big is that gun? The, I don't know. The 22 revolver, do you know? I bought it in Utah. It would have been about 75 when a friend of mine and I were target practicing. Okay. Can you describe it to me? What color is the um, the hand grip on the gun, on the 22? It's a wood hand grip, somewhat dark, and a standard blued finish. Okay. And you said it's uh, got a cylinder, of course, because it's a revolver? Yeah, you uh, pull and then rotate. Okay. And then... Uh, did you have it in a holster or a gun case or anything? Brown leather holster. Okay. All right. I'd actually been wearing that inside the house somewhat regularly. Okay. Were you wearing it at the time that incident happened, that break yeah. occurred? Mm -hmm. So you had it on your yeah. where did you you have it on you had it on your person, on your body, right? Yeah. Okay, where did you have it? Right here. Okay, you're pointing it right here. Are you uh, you're, you're referring to your belt, but Okay. I mean the brown leather holster has a belt loop. Okay, so you had so it it's on really your, out of the way. You had it on your uh, belt, on your right side hip. Yes, that's, that's what you were pointing. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. okay. Yes. okay. And it was uh, it loaded when you had it. Yes, it was. Okay. In um, fact, it was still loaded when they found it. They should have found it on the closet shelf upstairs. Okay. Okay. Um, if not, they should pick it up because I don't want to leave it laying loose with nobody in the house. Okay. I. Normally keep my guns loaded because there are no children around, no irresponsible people around. Okay. You said you had uh, um, used that 22 um, to shoot the female party, is that correct? Yeah. Okay. I might have put one. I'm trying, I don't. 
don't remember clearly whether the final shot to the man in the face was with that or not. Okay. I uh, don't want to prolong the suffering. If, if, even if I kill somebody, I don't want to leave them lay and suffer. Okay. Yeah. Uh, in fact, with uh, the female, after I dragged her out of the way, she was still doing some faint gasping, and I just right there. Just you're standing right there, but you're pointing your finger underneath in your chin. The chin into the cranium. Okay. Uh, at 22 is a pea shooter. It doesn't go through bone very well. Okay. Um, just to uh, clarify, with uh, first off, we'll clarify with the mm -hmm. male party. Yeah. Um, he got. He was walking down the steps. At, um, after you heard him coming down the hallway, yeah. he was walking down the steps to go to the basement. You seen his feet first, correct? Yep. And then his uh, knees. knees, and then his hip. Yeah, and, and I that's saw him shot? somewhere in the hip area. Okay. When you, how many times did you shoot when you saw his hip coming down the steps? It might, it might have been twice. I think it was once, but it might have been twice. Okay. Um, did he? Did this? A male party uh, have anything at his hand in his hands at all when he was walking down the steps when you saw him, or did you even see his hands I didn't at that see point? His hands at that point. Okay, so he's coming down the steps. You shoot. You shoot twice. Can you tell me what he was wearing? What kind of clothes he was wearing? Oh, uh, he was dressed like a high schooler, but much too old. Uh, he uh, fancy belt. Uh, Jeans. So he had jeans on, um, like a fancy belt, you said. What yeah. What did he have for, like, a, a shirt or uh, maybe a jacket on? Did you see? Do you recall? That's blank. I'm blank on that. Okay. One thing of importance, his shoes came off. Okay. His shoes I kicked underneath the reading chair. They're still there. Okay. Do you know what kind of shoes they are? I noticed, I checked the tread pattern on purpose. Whoever kicked in the door the previous time left their tread pattern on the door. And I brought it in to Jamie the following day. Okay. And he saved it in the evidence file. It had a sawtooth repeated pattern on the door. And that is characteristic of skateboard shoes. Mm. And I pointed it out to Jamie, pointing out as a piece of evidence that very few people under 30, I mean, very few people over 30 wear skateboard shoes. Mm -hmm. I like them because they're the best shoe for city hiking. So I showed him a pair, showed him the tread pattern, and I said, watch for this. Okay. The shoes that I kicked under the chair had that tread pattern. Okay. So those were the same shoes that the male party was wearing when he broke, came into your house? He was wearing them yesterday. They dropped off. I checked the tread pattern, and it looked to me to match the pattern on the door panel. Okay. When uh, when did the shoe? I mean, I mean, after you shot, he's walking down the stairs. You shoot shot, twice. You uh, said uh, with people, the many lose their balance on the stairs when they're shot. Sure. And he tumbled down to the floor. Okay. Is that when the shoes fell off of him? Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. So now. You shoot twice with the Mini-14. You hit him in the hip area. Is that where you hit him? Yeah. Okay. He falls down to the bottom of the steps, and he's yeah. on the floor, correct? And he's looking face up at me. Okay. Then what? I shoot him in the face. Okay. I want him dead. Mm -hmm. Where in the face did you shoot him? Do you remember? I don't know exactly. Somewhere near the center, and I didn't check afterwards. Okay. Okay. And was that with the Mini-14? That you shot him in the I face? So. Okay. Now, uh, at that point, there was a lot of blood, and I had a tarp laying by the fireplace that I was going to use to cover up the firewood. Mm -hmm. I pulled him on the tarp to keep so much blood from soaking into the carpet. Okay. Well, so did, did you pull him over by uh, um, from the away from the bottom of the steps over towards the fireplace? Uh, no, I spread the tarp out and pulled him onto the tarp. I might have moved him two or three feet. Okay. Then... Wait, where did you move him from there, from the bottom of the steps? Uh, it would have been slightly towards the fireplace, because that's where I laid out the tarp. Okay. Then, I just wanted it out of my sight, and I dragged him around the corner into the shop. Okay. In the shop area that's set up in the basement, correct? Which is exactly where you found him. Okay. 
Okay. Um, and then you said, then when did the female party come in? Was this after That's, this had happened? I, I, before I said two to five minutes later, and since I was just sitting there stunned, that's the best estimate I can give. Sure. Two to five minutes. Okay. Um, then you said you were sitting there stunned after this had happened. Where were yeah. you sitting? Same chair. In the same chair. Okay. And then tell me what and happened. the rifle was sitting, sitting right alongside me at that time because I had just used it. Okay. And you fired three rounds. Did you I reload the gun? Four. Okay. I'm not sure how many were in it. And then I reloaded it, yes. Okay. Did you have um, a box of ammunition sitting there, or did you have rounds in your pants pocket, or did you have to go get the rounds to reload they it? They were on the uh, countertop above the stereo. I just had some loose rounds there. Okay. How many rounds do you recall putting back in the, uh, to reload the Mini-14? How many rounds did you put back in, do you remember? The magazine only holds three, and there was one in the chamber. Okay. So I would have put in three, mm -hmm. and that's why uh, that's why it misfired after the first shot. Oh, okay. So, so the first shot, as she was coming down the stairs, as I recall, mm -hmm. was again at about hip height, and she fell, and it repeated, except... Oh, hold on, um, if that's okay. How, how many times did you shoot when you saw the hip area coming down the stairs, her hip area? I'm quite sure it would have been only once because okay. it's the second shot that jams coming out of the magazine. Okay. And did you hit her with that first shot? Do you remember? I don't know. Okay. I was shaking pretty hard. I might have missed I mean, it's what I would consider point-blank range, but I can't say for sure I hit her. Okay. Um, she did tumble, though. Was that after the first shot that she tumbled? Yes. Okay, so odds are you probably did hit her then. Yeah, I, I might have just grazed her. Okay. And uh, again, you saw the feet first coming down the steps, correct, yes. from the chair, and then when it reached where you could see her hip area, that's when you fired, Chris? Yes. Um, did, and... Obviously, you didn't I, see her thinking, hands at that time, you know, or my, if she my, had my anything. My thinking was, I'm not going to ask if there's a gun. Right. Uh, you know, people who steal guns, I don't want to give them the chance to shoot me. Okay. She could have or might not have had a gun in her hands. Okay. And if there's one in the corner somewhere, or if it was inside her clothing or her purse, I didn't check. Okay. So you shot. She came... Uh, tumbling down the steps, and then you went to shoot again, and the gun jammed. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Now, uh, what happened after that, after the gun jammed? After the gun jammed, well, he fell with his head under the table. She fell immediately at the bottom of the steps. So you'll see two different patches of blood on the floor. Okay. And when the gun clicked, misfired, she laughed at me. And... When she was laughing at you, she was at the bottom well, of the steps on the floor? It wasn't a very long laugh because she was already hurting. But, you know, there was this murder. And, okay, there was another red button I guess most people would have. It's not, if you're trying to shoot somebody and they laugh at you, you go again. So uh, when she laughed then, at you, did that? how did that make you feel? Did that infuriate you or make you upset? Or I knew that the gun had misfired previously. Take care. I was ready. And I just pulled it out, and uh, yes, I fired more shots than I needed to. Okay. I Why did you fire more shots than you needed to? Do you figure? 42 is a pea shooter, and I was very, very threatened, unhappy. You were mad, correct? Yes. Okay. She had basically enraged you for laughing at you, do you think? That was part of it? No, that was just. That was incidental. She'd been, a, whoever it was who was breaking into my home, mm -hmm. had been doing it for so long that I was no longer willing to live in fear. Right. Okay. So it was kind of a, um, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Byron, but it seems like a, combi a combination of things that uh, made you mad, basically, at that point. Would that be fair? Oh, I was, I, was, I was far over the edge. Okay. When you say far over the edge, how do you mean? Are you referring to infuriated, infuriated? No. Upset or how were you feeling? 
Normally when I do something, I justify it. Normally when I do something, I know exactly why I'm doing it and what I expect. Mm -hmm. I was reacting. Okay. What were you reacting to is what I'm asking. The threat, the previous losses. Okay. Uh, I spent 20 years overseas. Mm -hmm. A couple years in Bangkok, several years in Cairo, several years in nasty sub-Saharan Africa, three years in Moscow, three years in Beijing. Did you ever have to kill anyone before, Aaron? No. Okay. I was never even threatened. Okay. I never had anything stolen. There was never any vandalism. Mm -hmm. 20 years overseas, not one problem. And I retired to my peaceful hometown. Okay. Um, not to dwell back on it, Byron, but I almost got the the story from uh, with the female party. Um, she had uh, fallen to the ground. She laughed. She kind of had this laugh that you said she was when the, when your gun misfired, and then you said you reached towards your hip. And uh, you you had the 22 on your hip, right? I was wearing the 22. I have been wearing it inside my house for the past several weeks. Right, and that was loaded, and it's a nine shot, you said, yes. correct? Okay, you pulled the 22, and what'd you do with it? It was partially empty. Okay. So the first round, uh, there was not any, uh, there wasn't a bullet in for the first time I pulled the trigger. And I normally keep it that way. It, that's a minor safety thing. I can always pull the trigger again. Where were you aiming? Do you recall? Probably at her heart. Okay. Okay. And then uh, she stopped moving. Did the gun go off when you were aiming oh, at her yes, heart? Yes. Uh, maybe the chest area. Uh, well, I wasn't aiming that accurately. Okay. And uh, I... I would guess there were about four shots. Okay. Where did, with the 22 you're saying? With the 22, yes. Okay. And she stopped moving. So I grabbed her by the clothing and dragged her over onto the tarp that was in the shop. Okay. That's where I left her. When you, when you shot her, uh, you said four times. One was in the chest. Where were the other three rounds? Do you know? I would assume they were nearby. Near the chest, in the chest area, or? In the upper chest. Okay. Did you shoot her in the uh, facial area or head area at all? Do you uh, after she was on the tarp, she was still gasping. Okay. And as much as I hate someone, I don't believe they deserve pain. So I gave her a machine shot under the chin up into the cranium. Uh... Was she still at the bottom of the stairwell when no, that happened? That that was over in the shop. Oh, that was in the shop. Yeah. Okay. I thought she was dead, and it turned out she wasn't. Okay. So uh, I did a good, clean finishing shot. Okay. And uh, she gave out the death twitch. First time I've ever seen it in a human, mm -hmm. but it works the same in beaver and deer and whatever. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um. When you, uh, when she had, like I said, I asked you before if she had anything in her hands when she was walking down the steps, but you said you never seen anything in her hands. Right? I never saw her hands. Right. She tumbled before I saw her hands. Right. And then when she tumbled down to the ground and she's at the bottom of your steps, did she have anything in her hands then? Because you could see her then. Did you notice anything? Her hands were open, but she would have dropped anything she was carrying. And if there was something tangled up in her clothing or not, mm -hmm. I didn't check. Okay. Did she drop anything, though? You moved her body, so did you notice if she dropped anything? There was nothing she dropped that I saw on the floor after I moved her. Okay. If it had gotten... Her, her clothing was very tangled. Okay. In fact, her clothing was sufficiently tangled that uh, in the shop, her breasts were exposed and I pulled her shirt down again. Okay. So... Byron, she had uh, fell to the ground. You shot once with the M uh, M Mini 14. Yeah. She came tumbling down the steps. Now she's at the bottom of the steps. Mm -hmm. She doesn't have 
uh, you didn't notice, well, she basically didn't have anything in her hands, per se, as far as anything goes. I wasn't goes. looking at her hands. Okay. I wasn't looking at any of the details. But she's laying there, correct? Yes. Okay, and obviously you had hit her, so she's hurt, correct? Yes. Okay. Well, I didn't know how well I'd hit her. Right. I mean, she was still laying there looking at me. She could have gotten up again, for all I know. Okay. Uh, my question, Byron, is... Uh, why did, why did you shoot again? She didn't have a weapon in her hand. She wasn't... Actually, I don't know if she had a weapon in her hand until okay. later. Okay. I wasn't looking at her hands. But she, did, she was laying there, hurt. Did she... She wasn't threatening you. I'm just... I, I have to ask she you. was threatening me. I, okay. Explain I, that to me. I assumed she had a gun. Okay. Either inside something or in the purse or in her hand or whatever and in i i'm not going to wait for her to I'm not going to ask her if she has a gun right understandable okay i'm not going to wait until she shows it or if i if she uses it while i'm looking for it okay i had already determined that both of them i knew that they were both gun thieves as far as i was concerned they were totally dangerous okay Um, yeah. And this happened, you said, with both parties at around noon yesterday, correct? Yeah. Okay. Maybe five or ten minutes gap between them. Okay. What was she wearing? Do you recall what she was oh, wearing? Oh, yeah. What was she that wearing? That was memorable. Tight black sweatshirt that said hard candy. And I, when I saw that, I said, yeah, you're hard. And she is well known throughout the community as a hard case. Okay. Vandalism in Bell Prairie Park, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Anyway, what, what color uh, was that? You said it was a sweatshirt, correct? It was something like a sweatshirt, black, but better than that, she had the drawstring tight around her face. Okay. So she had and the hood that's, on. Oh, yes. Okay. And tightly drawn around to disguise any visual characteristics. Okay. The reason that struck me is that I had put up cameras to get visual characteristics of whoever it was, and she had already prepared herself to be not identified. Huh. Subsequently, thinking about it, I became very upset that all of this surveillance effort could have been for nothing because she was so well covered up and probably wouldn't have even been good enough to take the case to court. Okay. Okay. Um, do you remember what kind of pants she was wearing or shoes? I remember the shoes because I was still checking for uh, skateboard shoes. And she was wearing some sort of winter boot that was something else. Okay. But it was after that, since she was wearing some sort of winter boot, black and white, some sort of pattern, that... Uh, I checked his shoes and saw the pattern there because hers didn't have the pattern. I assumed, since it was a smaller wave pattern, that it was somebody with a small foot. Hmm. But then I noticed on his shoes that the outside was smooth, so it would have only printed in a small wave pattern. Hmm. Okay. So that needs to be carefully looked at to see if he was the one who kicked in the door earlier. And I've got every reason to believe that they were working as a pair. Okay. Well, as she went along the hall, no, she rattled the doorknob on the front door. Apparently, she expected him to open the door to let her in. Okay. That's just a suspicion. I wasn't there watching. But why would you rattle the doorknob if you're already inside the house? Mm. Unless you're wondering why it wasn't unlocked. So did you hear the doorknob rattle after the window was broken or before? Oh, there were two sets. The first time around was apparently just him. All three doors, window break, walking downstairs. She showed up several minutes later. I don't know what I would have done if they'd come down at the same time. Okay. But that's a what if. Okay. But anyway, she came in maybe five minutes later, walked down the hall, she rattled the door now, like she was curious why it hadn't been opened, like she expected him to let her in. Okay. 
they were obviously uh, accustomed to working with each other. Okay. Now, um, you said you put both of them on the tarp and you drug both? No, I dragged him in on the tarp. Yes. And then she came down later and I dragged her onto the tarp afterwards. Okay, yep. Back. That was mostly just to minimize the amount of blood in the carpet, but I'm going to replace the carpet anyway. Okay. And then you drug her back in right by him, is that correct? The male yes. part? Yes. Okay. And, then, and uh, shut the door so I didn't have to see him. Okay. And that's where they both uh, that's where were at when we came to your house and yep. you pointed out to us, showed us that's where they were, correct? Yeah. Okay. The only thing that I did about an hour later, put my fingers to the vein to see if it was pulsing. And it wasn't. On who? Both of them. Both of them? Okay. I just, you know, sitting there in the chair. Okay, I don't want to do it, but I got to check. And you were checking to see if what? To if make I had, if they were still alive. Okay. You know, the things that run through your mind when you're sitting there afterwards. Mm -hmm. So after the, you, the both bodies are um, in that back office room that you call, um, what did you do? What did you go do? That rest of that evening, the rest of that afternoon, that evening, all night long and the next morning, I was afraid of an accomplice. Bill and I had already discussed this, mm -hmm. that they probably had somebody in their house watching to see if I come driving home, to see if they see me, to see if anybody else is coming in, you know, hey, get out of there, there's somebody coming in. Mm -hmm. So uh, Bill and I really thought that their parents were in on it. Oh, okay. This was pure speculation, but to us it seemed reasonable. And I was sitting there afraid that most likely the brass-plated bitch would nag Scott into it, and he would come over with a gun to see what had gone wrong. I was sitting there afraid. Okay. And by this noon, I had finally reached the point where nothing's happened. I'm not going to be afraid anymore. Let's get this over with. Okay. Uh, so that's when you called Bill, right? Yep. And talked to Bill. But what I'm referring to is, uh, right after everything happened, okay, it's I done. I sat there for maybe two hours. The blood was pounding in my ears. In, where did you sit? It back in your... Back in the reading chair. chair. Oh, okay. And then after two hours, then what'd you do? Were you uh, home the entire time? I was after this in the happened? basement, hiding in the basement the entire, the entire time. Okay. Did you leave the residence at all from when the Never. incident happened up into our my arrival at your home? No. Okay. That was the first time I unlocked the door. Okay. So you were home the entire time? Yes. Okay. In fact, I was afraid to go upstairs because I thought there might be somebody with a gun looking in the windows. Okay. I was hiding in that chair. Mm -hmm. You may have found my other hiding place in the back of the storeroom. Mm -hmm. uh, when I fell over backwards, knocked my head, got that... Uh, scab, I landed on my tailbone and it hurt to sit in the same chair for more than an hour or two. So I alternated between that chair and a chair in the back of the storeroom. Okay. Um, and then when we came and made contact with you at your house, yep. um, you went through the scene of that with us and mm -hmm. showed us what you had, yep. um, showed us where the bodies in that were. And then um, we, uh, I told you that I had to uh, placed you under arrest at that time, mm -hmm. take you into custody, correct? Yes. Okay. Uh, and then I had to do what we did. A, I did a quick pat down search of you. Is that correct? Yes. For safety reasons. Mm -hmm. And then you had um, approximately four shells. I believe they were the mini 14 rounds in your right pocket. Is that I correct? I took the rest of them off the counter that the stereo was on and put them in my pocket in case the gun jammed in the back room or wherever because I was carrying it with me every step okay. the entire time. So you had uh, approximately four rounds of the Mini-14 in your right pocket when I did a pat-down yes. search of you. Would that be fair to say? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes or no? Yes. Okay. Yes. There, and were, then, there were about four in my pocket. Sure. It might have been five. Okay. And then in your left front pocket, I actually found approximately about the same four to five rounds of the 22 shells. Would that be fair to say? Yes. Okay. And I placed those actually on the... Mm -hmm. 
table there uh, in the basement okay. next to where um, yes. we had met. Okay. I felt very at threat because, in my opinion, Scott Williams is semi-psychotic. Mm. He has attacked numerous people for obscure reasons. And I, uh, if he was the person watching, if he was being an accomplice, he would come down with the gun to solve whatever problem he perceived. I felt totally at threat. In fact, I'm going to sleep safer tonight here. Mm -hmm. um, Byron, what kind of clo what clothes were you wearing when this happened? When uh, you had shot these two that entered into your broke into your home? After it got dark in the late evening, I snuck upstairs to my bedroom, got these pants, and took off the brown pants, same model Wranglers, and rolled them up and stuffed them in the back corner behind the uh, shelf that holds the stereo equipment. They're still there. In your they, bedroom, you're saying? No. Oh. In, 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 in the basement. In the basement? Yeah, I just stuffed them out of the way. Okay, so uh, they're in the basement, and you stuffed them, you said, where? I'm sorry. Okay. The reading chair, the stairway, uh -huh. the stereo equipment, around on the east side of the stereo equipment, on the north side of the room, against the north wall, which is the center divider wall of the house. Okay. And... Uh, is it kind of behind the stairs? It's underneath the stairs, except at the top of the stairs, there's a landing. So it's underneath the landing where you enter the stairs. Gotcha. Okay. And yeah. you said they're uh, like uh, brown in brown. color jeans? Same as these Wranglers, my standard brand, standard size. Uh, <laughs> thinking of it now, uh, don't get confused on the analysis. Uh, Mike Lerke gave me a couple of beaver that he sh that he trapped in my yard. They're terrible on the trees, and uh, and one leg has a bunch of beaver blood on it. Okay. So there's both beaver blood and human blood on the fence. Oh, okay, okay. Just in case anybody analyzes it. Right. Yeah. What were you wearing for um, shoes then? Is that exactly the same as I have now? Okay. Okay. In fact, I've been wearing this. Uh, 8.30 yesterday morning, breakfast, mm -hmm. I was planning on doing some yard work. Okay. So you were wearing shoes at the time I this was, happened, correct? I've been wearing all of this exactly as I have now, except I changed the pants sometime around midnight. Okay. So you had the uh, the blue jean coat on also? Yeah. When it, when this happened? I keep the house cool. I'm sure. I always wear an overcoat. Well, I mean, a uh, heavy shirt in the winter time. Okay. So you didn't change your shirt or your jacket at all then since the, since it happened. Yeah, that's why I'm asking. Yeah. So okay. you're saying there might be spots of blood on your on your jean jacket that you're wearing, correct? Yes. Okay. How about your blue shirt that you have on? Same shirt. Uh, okay. The tails were out at that time. I tucked them in now. Okay. So. Uh, okay. I tucked them in when I changed pants. Sure. So there might be spots of blood on the tails of the shirt. I don't see any here. Okay. And, uh, and and the sleeves of the jacket would have covered the shirt. Okay. I'm going to um, need your clothes for analysis. So do you have any problems if I take possession of your clothes for any uh, evidence reasons? Check them for anything you want. So you have no problem if I would obtain them at the, right now at this point? No. In a little bit here. I'd like to have something else to Yes, me. you will. <laughs> okay. But uh, you don't object to me uh, holding on to your clothes for evidence at this point? No. Okay. Um, and then... Uh, plenty, of, plenty of spare clothes. In okay. fact, I noticed that there is a spot of blood on the tip of the shoe. Yeah, I kind of noticed. See that right here now when you're not talking to me about it. So, okay. So I will have to obtain those for evidence reasons, and you're okay with that? I understand that there are procedures to be followed, and yes. these procedures are all established for well justified reasons, uh, and I don't intend to argue with any of it. Okay, sounds good, Byron. Byron, um, um, I would also like to ask you would you be okay to consent to give me a, um, a DNA test? 
And no problem at all. The way I would obtain that is by a mouth cheek swab. I'm familiar with the process. Yeah. Would you uh, consent to give me yes. one of those? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. I would like. Also, to you should get a new print of that. It's healed up since uh, JB took mine a couple of weeks ago. Are you saying your thumbprint? Yeah. You're referring to that? Okay. Right. Uh, I. Uh, are you? Uh, would you consent to at this point right now? To um, um, would it be okay for us to obtain fingerprints from you also? You've got a full set except for the thumb, but we'll do it again. Okay. You'd be willing to do that sure. for us? Okay. I mean, I've done it already. Sure. So if that's okay with you, I would like to obtain, when I'm done talking to you here, a DNA sample from you of a, um, a cheek swabbing, mouth swabbing, sure. that's the DNA mm -hmm. sample, and then I'd like to obtain a full set of fingerprints uh, from you. Uh, are you willing to consent to me to do that? I consent to all of that. Okay, thank you very much. And actually, they might come out better because I haven't been doing as much yard work the past couple of weeks. Oh, sure. Actually, no, Byron, the... Uh, uh, when I got to your house, you told us also, after I placed you into custody and that, um, the guns were in your upstairs closet, correct? In the northeast the corner of the house. But actually, there are two closets, and there was the... Well, you can tell where the rifle goes because the wall right there is scarred from 20 years of it. Okay. Yeah. And the handgun was in the right-hand closet. Okay, so you had the the twenty two handgun in the right hand closet, mm -hmm. correct? On the top shelf. And then you had the Mini 14 in the left hand closet. Leaning up against the left side of the left hand closet. Okay, when did you put those guns in the closet? When you were on your way. Okay. I don't like to have guns in sight anytime law enforcement is involved because it makes you guys nervous. Oh yeah. <laughs> Very true. Yeah. And that's why I came to the door with my hands out and up. Yeah. No, yes you did, and I appreciate that. Yes. Um, so you said, do you remember what you said? You placed those guns in there when you knew that we were on our way. Yes. How did you know that we were on the way to your house? Oh, Bill called me. He said you'd be there in five to ten minutes. Okay. But those numbers, I know Bill enough to know that five or ten minutes, and it actually took you 25. Okay. <laughs> so I wasn't worrying about it. Bill, okay. Bill's numbers are a little loose. Okay, sure. But I knew you'd come. Sure. So and, and I was, actually, I was sitting uh, at the kitchen table watching down the driveway, which is why I was ready for you at the door. Okay. Okay. Um, I have to ask, Byron, after the shooting and it's done, um, why didn't you call law enforcement to report what happened? For the first couple hours, I was just shaking. And I gradually shifted into worrying about another accomplice. I mean, accomplice. There had already been two. Mm -hmm. Who knew that both uh, the brass-plated bitch and her husband were both watching? Mm -hmm. uh, as far as I knew, the whole family was in on it. Bill and I thought the whole family was in on it. And uh, I was pretty much afraid to do anything. Okay. An hour later, I had this screwball thought that seemed sort of irrational now, but... Uh, just because my Thanksgiving screwed up, I don't need to screw up yours. Okay. Is that kind of why you didn't call law that, enforcement? That, that, that was a part of it. And I was also sitting there thinking, it's all over. It's not going to change. I can wait till tomorrow in the daylight. I might be thinking more clearly. Okay. Okay. I, I saw it as a static situation. Sure. Okay. Um, Byron, I think we covered... Pretty much and what I, I can think of at this point. Okay. And I haven't thought of anything else to add, but if I do, okay. I'll let you know. Okay. Um, Details like the shoes might pop up later. Sure. Details like making sure the DVR is turned off before tomorrow noon. Okay. If we if we would have any further questions later with you, would you be okay to, um, with talking with us? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Then uh, I'm going to conclude the statement at this time. Okay. Does that sound good, Byron? Mm -hmm. Okay. And the time right now is 16.01 hours. This is Sergeant Investigator Jeremy Lewis with the Morris County Sheriff's Office, and this will be a continuation of a statement, um, and I'm currently in the interview room at the Morrison County Sheriff's Office, 
The time right now is 1619 hours, and currently present with me is Byron Smith. And this is reference to case file number 12007894. Now, uh, Byron. Um, and it's also in reference to the case file for the previous break in. Correct. And I don't know that. For other break ins that you had reported okay. also. You betcha. Okay. Now, Byron, uh, um, I had been talking with you um, just a little bit, a bit ago previously in regards to. Uh, uh, the matter why you had been placed under arrest, and this will be a continuation of that statement. Understood. You had been read your Miranda warning legal rights, correct? Understand, yes. And do you know what those are? You know what your legal rights are, correct? Yes, I know them. Would you like me to reread them to you? Not necessary. Okay, you understand them. Um, having your legal rights in mind, are you willing to continue to talk to me at this point? Yes, this okay. is a reasonable continuation of an important matter. Okay. Uh, now, Byron, in regards to the uh, the guns, the yes. Mini 14 and the and the 22 pistol that was used in this um, this break in at your house there. You know what I'm talking yes. about. Yes. Um, now you had previous break ins to your house. You said and items had been stolen. Correct. Yes. Were guns taken from your house on those incidents? Yes. Okay. So now these guns in particular were they at your house when you had these past burglaries occurred? Uh, they missed them, the first couple that were not break-ins, that were just thefts, okay. grand larceny, but thefts. Uh, because at that time I was working in my backyard, but when I noticed the pattern, I started locking the doors. After I started locking the doors, the dog has, had eaten well enough at the garbage pail, they kept returning. Okay. So, the previous thefts were not break-ins because I was working in my backyard, but they knew I wouldn't be coming to the house until I turned off the chainsaw, so they felt safe. So okay. somebody entered into your house and then yes. uh, and guns they, were taken? And they missed the guns the first time, but the second time they found two guns in the closet where I keep them that we discussed earlier. Mm -hmm. And one was a stainless steel Ruger Mini 14 that had been bought approximately 89. Mm -hmm. uh, a copy of the receipts already in the file. Yeah. And because I had used that gun for many years, felt comfortable with it, felt safe with it, felt it met my needs, after it was stolen, within a few days, I went to Walmart and bought a second one. The original was stainless steel, the new one is standard bluing. Yeah. Okay, uh, also there was a shotgun. They stole the, my father's shotgun, one that he used for 30 years, 40 years of happy hunting. Mm -hmm. It is easily identifiable. It's a, uh, uh, oh, my memory slipped here, Remington 50, uh, one in the chamber, four in the uh, stock. And the characteristic of it that's readily noticeable is that the wooden stock is broken. I had it taped together with gray duct tape. It should be showing up at some local pawn shop. However, while going to a couple local pawn shops just to see what was showing up, I saw another Model 50. And actually, it turned out to be 55, which is very close, at Iron Hills Pawn Shop. And the price was uh, about $150. And as, since it was a reasonable replacement, I didn't expect to find another one very soon, I bought it. Okay. So it's in the house now, but I was not using it. Okay. Okay. Um, so these two guns that were used on the incident that you described to me, when did you buy, did you recently buy these two guns? The Ruger Mini 14 that I used in the incident was bought approximately three weeks ago, a couple of days after the previous break-in to replace, to replace the one that had been stolen. Okay. However, the 22 goes back to approximately 75, which I bought in Utah for target practice, and it was laying in the back of the shelf. I haven't fired it for 20 years. But since the Ruger Mini 14 misfired on me, I felt the need to carry a second gun. Okay. So you've had the 22 pistol, the revolver, I'm sorry, for a long time? 75. Sure. Um, and now your previous break-ins to your house, um, they had... Uh, somebody didn't see it or they missed it, it wasn't stolen, correct? That's how come I knew it. Some of the other possible neighbors who might have been nosy were made very unlikely because in the back corner of that closet, 
there was a gun that was in the case. And this thief was sufficiently unfamiliar with guns to just take the ones that were identified as you could see there were guns. Mm-hmm. She missed the one that was in a case. Okay. Now, most hunters, most guys, they can tell a gun whether it's in the case or out. Mm-hmm. This person took the two that were in the case and missed the one in the back corner. Okay, so they Wait. missed that 22 years ago, no, right? they missed the 30 6 that I bought about a year ago. Okay. And I just bought it because uh, I had some extra money to invest, and actually I've never fired it. Okay. I bought it used at... Uh, uh, the sports place in the Crossroad Mall. Hmm. It was uh, it was a model that I wanted just for the extra firepower, just in case there's a deer thousand yards away or whatever. Mm-hmm. And uh, even though I bought it, you know, I'm not a gun nut, and I just haven't fired it yet. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, so in answer to the twenty two. The reason they didn't get it from the last break-ins is you think they might have missed it? Or missed what? it. Okay, missed they it. missed it. That's, it, right. That's my it question. It was in the you. back of the closet under the clothes and hats. Mm-hmm. But as thoroughly as they dug through on the more recent visits, they would have found it. Okay. Okay. That's all I had, Byron, okay. at this point, at this time. So anything else you want to add? Uh, no. Okay. Uh, and this concludes the statement. The time is 1625 hours. Well, that was Byron's interrogation. He made it to the end of this Halloween special. Byron is clearly an innocent man, and these two teenagers died doing what they love to do, break into people's homes. That's a life lesson to be learned, is you don't break into people's homes. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know, am I wrong? Is this man guilty? Did the jury get it right? He was found guilty and sentenced to life in prison. He seems like an innocent man to me who was just defending his home, who wanted the nightmares on Elm Street to end. Anyways, thank you very much for watching this Halloween special. Leave me a comment down below, smash the like button. Please make sure you're subscribed with the bell notifications turned on. We've got a lot more interrogations coming soon. And until next time, remember to stay safe out there because you know it's a dangerous world.